Hey team and happy Wednesday. I wanted to uh, deliver this video to you yesterday actually for our Tuesday team tip of the day. Um, but I'm actually glad that I waited because the same very topic that I'm going to discuss today was brought up on our team Zoom call um, for our Push to Diamond group last night. So um, I got a couple more good tips to add to um, my list. So Today's topic is going to be finding your target audience. And I know when we first get started as a coach, we want to help everybody. It's our goal, right? And Beachbody says you need to be out there and you need to be marketing. You need to be building relationships and um, adding people to your list. Well, where are these people? Who are these people? Where do I find these people? What list, right? So hopefully these five tips that I'm going to present to you today will help you in identifying who your target market is so that you can truly grow your business to the best um, that you can. So my five tips are number one, and you might have heard this before, it's finding your five. So what that means is finding five things that are unique about you. And yes, having kids might be unique about you, but everybody else has kids as well. So if kids is one of your uh, five, then that's okay, you can stick with that. But truly, you want to identify yourself or separate yourself from the other 200,000 Beachbody coaches that are out there. So find what's unique about you. What hobbies do you have? What types of things do you enjoy um, You know, outside of your Beachbody life? We all are gonna talk about fitness. We're all gonna talk about healthy eating. People can get that from anywhere. So what separates you from the rest of the crowd. And once you identify five things that are your brand, start thinking about what those five things are every time you post. So when you're giving a message out on Facebook or you're doing a twi uh, Twitter tweet, um, you're posting a picture on Instagram, it should in some way relate to one of your five brands. Because one, that's gonna make you consistent. People are gonna start following you. Um, people that have the same or similar interest uh, will start reaching out to you. If you are all across the board or you're saying one thing one day and you're saying something different the next day, people aren't gonna be able to relate to you. So it's super important that when you are delivering your messages out on social media or even in public or in person, um, that you are following those five things that are your brand. Number two, you need to be you. So maybe your brand is similar to another coach. Maybe you are really, really into makeup and you just love makeup and uh, I'm not a makeup person so I don't even know why I threw that one out there. But if makeup's important to you and you like to post about makeup and your favorite eyeliner and which mascara lasts the longest, etc., make sure that that is you. Because if you're seeing Lindsay Matway post about it and all you're doing is copy and pasting her post, people aren't identifying with you. They're identifying with Lindsay Matway. And in the long run, the truth is gonna come out and that's the person that they're um, ideally gonna be following and probably signing up with. So it's okay to follow other coaches that have you know like-minded interest, but when you're doing your post, change it, make it about you, add something relatable or an experience that you had that makes that post more coming from you versus it sounding like it's coming from someone else. So number three, be selective. And I know this is one thing that I'm just really getting good at because as a coach, we do, we wanna help everyone. We want guys, girls, young people, old people, you know, every religion, every race, every national, every this, that, right? Because that's gonna build our business. The more people that we have, the more people um, that will be working a business and you know, in the long run, help build your team and your volume, et cetera. However, that's not true. And if you spend your time marketing to the wrong target audience, you're gonna be wasting a lot of your time. So for me, what I like to do or what I've recently been doing is being very selective about who I'm targeting. So my post, when I, I post something out there, I'm thinking, who is this going to attract? Is it going to attract the type of people that I want on my team? Is it gonna attract the type of challengers that I want in my group? And Maria Kappa, our upline, made a very good point last night where 
a, you know, a year, two years ago, she was doing a lot of bikini competitions. So a lot of her posts were of her in her bikini half naked, right? Who was she targeting? Well, she was attracting a lot of men that were just mainly following her because they wanted to see her in a bikini. So she has had to make that shift into what types of pictures and, um, you know, posts that she does in order to truly attract the type of market that she wants to. So be very selective. Don't just go out there and just, you know, throw out your fishing line and hope to catch any type of fish out there. We want to make sure that the people that you're bringing on to your team are those that are like-minded, have similar interests, because one, you're going to be able to relate to them. You're going to be able to help them. Your relationship will be stronger. I know for me, I have better experience working with moms who are, you know, stay at home, also in the workforce, but being a stay at home mom, I can relate to some of the struggles that stay at home moms go through. Um, I like to relate to moms who breastfed or uh, moms who went through postpartum depression, because those are all things that I went through. A 75 year old man retired from the military isn't gonna have the same story or be able to relate to my story and where I came from. And you guys, you have to keep in mind, these are people that once they're on your team, they're in it for the long run. So they have to be somebody that you like and that you wanna be around because this is your business and you can hire anybody you want. You can choose who you're working with, so be selective. Number four is track. Like I mentioned, my target I'm finding are people that are of my similar age, are females, are moms, you know, they have kids, etc. So if you're running a Facebook fan page, it has the insights in there. You can see the, the common um, people that are commenting on your page or liking your page. So you can truly see what type of target audience um, that you're attracting. And if it's not the type of audience that you want, then you know you need to change up um, the type of post that you do. If you're not using a fan page, then what I like to do, and this kind of rolls into number four or number five, is ask, what does your audience want from you? You see a lot of coaches out there asking their audience, do you want to hear more about fitness tips from me? Do you want to hear about more nutrition tips from me? Um, I did a little experiment the other day where um, I did this, what I thought was like a heartfelt post, right? It was about me believing in people and the belief um, and the support system that I offer as a coach. And I thought, gosh, when I put this out there, you know, it was, it was scary for me to do. It was kind of out of my comfort zone. I'm normally the joke around, you know, maybe add a, you know, a curse word here and there into my posts, whatever. So for it to be so soft, um, I, I was pretty vulnerable and it didn't get that much attention. I think I had like five or six likes on it, which I thought, okay, so maybe people don't need saving or need help, right? So I thought, let me do a little experiment. And I just wrote, I, I did a post that just said sex, just one word, sex, right? Of course, all my friends going crazy, comment this, joke around that. I, I was getting private messages like crazy. Did you get hacked? What's going on? Ha, ha, ha. And of course, other comments I won't even mention here. But um, it really let me believe that the people that are following me and seeing my post, they don't necessarily want the sappy stuff. They want to... They want, you know, fun, outgoing, lively, social Daphne type things, which I need to figure out a way how to incorporate that into my Beachbody lifestyle and my soft post as well, right? Because I don't want to just be known as this fun, outgoing person. I truly am trying to build a business with a target audience of people. So anyways, those are my five tips. Hopefully it helps you. If you are getting stuck up or held up on number one and identifying your brand, reach out to me. Um, we have exercises that we can do. We can reach out to other coaches who have had the same struggles. Um, we can go through fun little activities. Um, and again, your brand might always change. So what you think is important to you now or what you enjoy now, that might change down the road. I know I've changed so much as a coach, but um, I'll leave you with a couple of tips on how to identify your brand really quick. Um, but again, we could do some exercises or fun activities. Something that has helped me is what makes me different. I have tattoos. Not a lot of people out there have tattoos and not a lot of people want to work with a coach that has tattoos. Sad, right? I know. You get judged by just uh, some ink on your skin. But tattoos, it's something that identifies me. It's part of my brand. Um, having kids. My new puppy. Once I got my new puppy, I thought, oh, my new puppy. I love my new puppy. And I want to share that. And people love 
pet photos. So I try to do a couple of those, you know, a couple times a week and that boosts the attention that I get on my page, etc. Um, your certain job, maybe you have a unique nine to five job. Maybe you're, um, I don't know, a, a ballet dancer or an opera singer or something like that. Not a lot of people can relate to that. That's unique. So talk about that because there are people out there that maybe don't know that about you. And if you open up and start sharing things about hobbies that you have, maybe um, I collect thimbles. Did you know I collect thimbles? Maybe there's other thimble collectors out there. Um, so just try to find things that are unique to you but will be relatable to others if that helps. All right, guys, that is my tip for the day. If you have any questions, as always, reach out to me and hope you have a great day.